applications, 1997. Adrian Owen is a science superstar, one of the UK's top 50. Oh, that's my thesis, 20 years old. He specializes in brain injury at Cambridge University. But after 15 years, he's moving to Canada, lured by a prestigious research chair at the University of Western Ontario. Canada's decided to invest in science. In my case, it's decided to invest in neuroscience. Uh, and I am going to a place that is going to support the work that I do. Ooh, it's a nice brain. Brains are his passion. That and tennis. Why tennis? When you move your arms around, you, um, you produce activity in the premotor cortex. It's an area of your brain that we know is involved in preparing to move. We're going to try and get you to imagine playing a game of tennis while you're lying in the scanner. Yeah. Owen has used an MRI to scan dozens of healthy volunteers like me. Here's the exciting part. He's used the same test with people thought to be unconscious or in a vegetative state, often after serious brain trauma. All right, Susan, so we're now going to start the task. When you hear the word respond, we want you to imagine playing tennis in your head, OK? OK, Susan, respond. You've done very well. We can see that you're playing tennis very hard. Um, we're looking for activity, particularly in this region here. Um, if Martin moves the brain up, you'll see it at the top of her brain. There it is there. This band of activity, we see this in every person that imagines playing tennis. And that's how we know that she's conscious. When Owen's team scanned the so-called vegetative patients, four could do the same thing. Visualize playing tennis. One woman in particular showed remarkably the same results as someone like myself. When we asked her to respond in exactly the same way uh, that we're asking Susan to respond, again, she produced activity in the premotor cortex. Relax. Okay, yeah. The research confirmed that some patients, about 17%, thought to be locked up are actually conscious, but unable to convey that. It's hard. So. Ooh. Here's your brain, Susan. Oh. It's this area lit up exactly as it should have done, and exactly as it does in those patients that we think are vegetative but are actually conscious. Owen's not the only brain that Britain's losing. He's poached five of his team to join him. He'll have $10 million in Canadian science grants to spend over seven years, a rare certainty. Uh, the term is very unusual, um, and the amount of money is very unusual. Um, it's a seven-year... It's a year. lot for a long time. It's a lot for a long time. Now have a look around you. Who's, who's going to get cut? If only the future looked as bright for these UK scientists. Rare to see lab coats in a mass demonstration, but the science community is fighting a planned public spending cut, which could wipe out billions of R&D funding. It's a, it's a downward spiral, and you, you lose the race. You start to lose the race with the uh, other countries, like Canada. Canada knows that story. With years of significant brain drain in the 1990s to the US and elsewhere, Britain's now feeling that pinch. And I believe that science is our only hope for the future of our economy. This is the worst possible time to be thinking about cutting science. With a decision on cuts days away, the scientists left their labs to hand carry a petition with 33,000 signatures right to the Prime Minister's doorstep. Their message to David Cameron is consider this country's history of science excellence, all those Nobel Prize winners for one. Don't chip away at R&D, they argue. It's the future. Cut somewhere else. The thing I worry about most is that people, the public, think of science and scientists as people in white coats that have test tubes and maybe think, well, we could do without that for a few years. That would be a good way to save money. And it isn't. So, part of his future research, now in Canada, maybe an EEG-like cap for patients thought to be unconscious. 
a net of electrodes that are placed on the outside of the head. So it's, it's non-invasive, it's, it's typically not terribly uncomfortable. Uh, and we can pick up the electrical signals from the outside of the brain across the whole of the head. Britain's loss is looking like Canada's brain gain. Susan Ormiston, CBC News, Cambridge.